So y'all mean to tell me that it's not one hairstylist in Johannesburg that knows how to properly install a lace front wig. Have it make sense. Hey everyone, it's Sharonda from Pay Your Weights, and today I'm going to be reviewing Young, Famous, and African, a new reality series that has hit the Netflix streaming platform. The series centers around a group of famed, affluent young media stars in Johannesburg as they build their careers, look for love, and rekindle old flames. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, hello, so glad you came, I hope you stay. I'll tell you what I liked about this series, what I didn't like about this series, and is it worth your time or not binging Young, Famous, and African on Netflix? So going into my review, which is going to be a little bit different, um, I am going to do like the non-spoilery review and then I am going to get into some spoilers, delving deep into some of my favorite characters, you know, not so favorite characters, how I feel about some of the drama that has transpired on the series. But yes, let me go ahead and get into some of the things that I did enjoy about the series. And first and foremost, I just like that we have a re reality series that focuses on African people this time in Johannesburg because as I just said if you watch my Atlanta review there is still like a couple of people who are just touched in the head and they just don't have the right like just perception of how people in Africa actually live so I just like that we have a series that follows people who live in Africa who have money that's still left to be determined story for a different day but I'm just happy that we're able to see you know Africans in a different light on this series now, also too, what I will say is I love that this is a great mixture between men and women. I love that it truly does feel like a friend circle. Like I actually believe that these people are friends in real life. But most importantly, I love the dynamics, especially between the men and women within their friendships. I love that, you know, when the men are going through things, they have friends who are women, you know, that they seek counsel from, that they truly value their opinion, that they truly care for their friends. And it's just happy to see members of the opposite success just coexisting in a healthy friendship that's not, you know, I'm trying to get under, get in your pants and get into your bed. They're just like platonic friends. And I really love that we actually get to see representations of that. I hope we get to see more representations of that, that there can be healthy friendships between members of the opposite sex. But most importantly, I love that, um, as you see, as the group starts to have a little rift, I love that they try to make sure that no one ever feels like they're on another level than anyone else. No matter how much more money someone else has, like they all treat everyone equally in my humble opinion. But I love to see, there is some good fashion to see, all right? Now there's some good fashion, especially with Swanky. You pay attention to Swanky because Swanky is just the epitome of perfection when it comes to just slaying every look, all right? Now, I ain't gonna say everybody know how to do that, but we gonna get into that in the cons, but Swanky, honey, who just, I just, I was like, just let me, let Swanky just style me so I could be a bad beast, okay? Just let Swanky style me, because I know, I know Swanky gonna slay it, all right? Now, there is a lot of messiness that does happen in this series. You know, it is kind of balanced, though. I don't feel like, there's only a couple of storylines that I kind of felt like, Okay, this is clearly for reality TV, but there is some mess, there is some drama that is happening that I was like, you know what, I shouldn't be here for it, but I was here for it is what kept me watching every single episode. I will say that it's actually entertaining. Like I never felt like there was an episode that was like, eh, this is kind of boring. Like I don't want to watch another episode. I quickly binge through those episodes very quickly, like less than a day. I started Friday night, finished today, had to push back my workout because I was so entertained. I was, I, I would have to say that it was entertaining and it never got slow for me. I was just fully invested in everybody's storyline. Um, now I'm trying to think that's pretty much it. Like that was fine. Now going into some of the issues that I did have with the series, I wanted to see a little bit more culture. Like, you know, you're in Johannesburg, South Africa, and especially because in the beginning of the series, there is, there's two Nigerians on the series, and they were talking about the differences of how South Africans speak versus, you know, how the Nigerians speak. And I was just like, I wish they would have went a little bit deeper into culture because I don't think especially, there is a lot of representation on Netflix. There's a lot of South African series on Netflix, but I don't know if that's necessarily hitting all of these general mainstream audiences as much as I've seen people talk about this series. And I wish they would just would have delved a little bit more into the culture about what makes them, 
you know, what makes them different in a good way in South Africa and how that compares to, you know, other African countries. I just wish I could have seen a little bit of that. Now, I think the biggest travesty, though, the biggest travesty of young, famous and African is I am just I was hurt. I was hurt because I just didn't understand why everyone's wig was so terrible. It was terrible. It was terrible. Everybody's wig. I said, how y'all young, famous? How y'all how y'all got money and y'all ain't got no good lace fronts? Have it made sense? Y'all, there was a scene and somebody's lace front, it was back here. It was back here. Like you could see the corn roll starting. They lace front was back here. I said, ma'am, I can't even focus on the drama because your wig is all the way back here. And that's just unacceptable. And I know Sharana, like, why are you talking about people's hair? Hey, I don't have the best hair days all the time. But if I am rich, if I'm rich, rich, okay, please believe that my hair will be slayed every day. Every day, every day, I saw wigs out of place. I saw wigs not fully secured, not fully secured. I saw lashes like off. Like at one point I was staring at somebody, I was like, damn, like is something wrong with their eyes? Is that they lack, like, what is it? And they lash was twisted. And I was just like, y'all are all beautiful. Y'all are all beautiful. But there's just no reason that you should be on TV like that Especially talking about other people, talking about other people, knowing that your wig looks like that, that your hair looks like that, that your lashes look like that. Ah, ah, ah. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We ain't doing that no more. So I just hope that for 2020, that for the next season, okay, in 2023, when they give us our next season, because we're going to claim it and manifest that it's going to happen because I just need to see more messiness and drama. I'm just gonna ask that we f we get the wig budget. We gotta get a wig budget. We gotta get a stylist on set, like somebody, fly somebody in. There, let there be, now if anyone is a hairstylist in Johannesburg right now, this is your time to shine. This is your time to let people know that you are the best wig installer in Johannesburg. This is the time to put your videos, your TikToks, your reels, whatever you need to know. This, this, this is your time, this is your sign. Let them know that you know how to put wigs on and let them make sure that they pay you to install their wigs, all right? Now, also too, what I will say, um, some of the storylines kind of felt forced, okay? Not a lot of them, but there's something that they do toward mid towards this series that just feels so out of place. And they kind of end on this cliffhanger with this storyline. And I was just like, this don't even feel like that this person would actually do something like that. And I just couldn't believe it. Like, even when they were trying to, like, introduce it into the second half of the season, I was just like, honey, this is giving me stage, fake, scripted. That's what it was giving me. And then also, too, there is a storyline with someone, and I don't want to spoil it. We're going to get into this in the spoilers. But I just want to make sure that when we, I don't want to see struggle love. You know, I just don't want to see struggle love. And there's a storyline where they were trying to make it, like, come full circle and just be a cute moment. And I was just like, absolutely not. No, uh-uh, we can't do that. It just, let's just stop with struggle love. Cause that's not cute. Let's just make sure that we can invest in getting people therapy. And I just, I just didn't like it. But I mean, that's, that's overall for me. I really enjoyed this series. I'll definitely tell y'all to binge it. It's a quick binge. The episode's like 35 to 45 minutes is really not that bad but I do want to delve in a little bit deeper with some of the people so if y'all have not watched pause take a break because I don't want everybody saying Sharana you spoiled it for me go finish watching the series and then come back and we can have a nice conversation all right all right all right so let's get into a couple of spoilers about this season so when I first of all Swanky I really I think Swanky was one of my favorite characters in the entire season um, also, too, just his his friendship between him and Annie. I just really love their friendship. It felt very genuine. Like, they really care for one another. But also, too, can we just talk about Swanky as a stylist was slaying Annie's looks. Now, I'm not going to lie. I judged Annie when I saw her for the first time. I was like, I don't know, honey. Like, you're not giving me rich and famous. But I was just like, baby, when we got to, like, Annie had a couple of looks that was slaying. And when we got to the light blue outfit, I was like, Look, 
whatever you paying Swanky, double that on top of that, okay? Because Swanky is a beast at what Swanky does. I absolutely love every single look, and especially Swanky Slay, everything. Every look that Swanky was in was everything. I was just like, can y'all just do a show about Swanky styling people? Because I'm totally here for it, and I would totally watch it. And I feel like there is an audience there. But um, let me delve deeper into some of the relationships on the series because I will say that for the relationship of well actually since I'm talking about Annie let me just start on Annie this is kind of one of the things that I was alluding to you know in the non-spoiler review about this whole thing about struggle struggle love between her and her husband like on one hand like you know I think it's very commendable that you know Annie is so honest and vulnerable about her situation and I think that giving us a little bit more backstory into it, the fact that she had been with her, you know, husband since she was 16, since before he even got famous, you know, I think that that helps shed some light from a mental standpoint on why, you know, she is able to leave the relationship or to let go. This is the only person that she's ever known in that way. And so, but I just felt like they were trying to show this like fairy tale thing towards the end with their relationship and I just don't like this whole struggle love thing and even when we got to the wedding episode and people were just like it's supposed to be this happy day but people just like oh they've been through so much all the infidelity the kids I mean he had you didn't even have his first born and you've been with him since you was 16 oh my god that's that's a lot and to like still just tell the world that you just, that's your man, that's your husband. I mean, more power to her. Like, cause that takes a lot of strength to even do that. I'm not just gonna sit up here and attack, you know, her relationship. Cause there's probably things that we will never know, but I just didn't like, it just didn't sit right in my spirit. How it's supposed to be this happy day. And all I could think about is like, he had all these kids, like raw dog and all these other women when he's supposed to be with you. And it just didn't sit right in my spirit. And it just kind of felt like, when we got to the wedding, it just, you couldn't even get into the episode because you were still sitting here blown like, I can't even believe that you like y'all still together. I just can't. But um, I do want to talk about Ndele, who was actually, he was actually one of my favorite characters. Like, I loved his style, like just the swag that he had. Like, I was just like, like, that's someone that I would gravitate towards. And then when they tried to force this storyline between him and Diamond's baby mama, it just didn't even feel like that that was him as a person, as the person they presented, because I don't know this man. But it just felt like, can we say four scripted? It just was, it was giving me like, we're just trying to find some type of drama to put together. And it just didn't feel like within his character or match the friendship between him and Diamond for him to be pursuing his baby mama. And as him who has two other baby mamas himself, I don't even understand like how in his mind, he was just like, this isn't something I'm supposed to tell. I'm just not some conversation that I need to have with Diamond. It just didn't make any logical sense to me. And then that fake scam at the end, trying to create some drama of Diamond coming and then him coming. I was just like, this is just giving me fake. Like, it's just giving me fake. And honestly, if you look at his two baby mamas, that is not his type. That is not, he likes dark-skinned women, petite women, kind of like what Annie was saying about her husband. That seems to be what Andilla's type is anyway. So it just, that felt very staged and fake to me. Um, I will say I did like Zani. I thought, not Zani. Is it Zani or Nadia? Baby, let me make sure. See, I'm gonna mess up everybody's name. I didn't. I just watched this series, and I forgot that quick. I think it it was Nadia. So Nadia, she was cool. I wish we would have seen more of like who she was as a rapper, because like to give that intro, and then we never see you like working, performing, not doing anything. Like this is why I felt like you know some of the people on the show really don't have money like that. Like they just didn't, and she was one of those people. But I still thought she was cool. But I just. Didn't, I don't feel like I really got to know anything about her instead is outside of she had fat ass and she's beautiful, but that's all I got. And that Diamond wanted, was in love with her, infatuated with her. That's all I really got from the situation. And I just hope that in the new season that we get to see more about her. Um, Connie, 
Um, I did not like Kanye at first, but I will say Kanye really surprised me and grew on me. Kanye is another one who really doesn't have a storyline outside of meddling in other people's storylines. Um, I wish we would have delved more into the relationship between her and her daughter and how she allows her daughter to have like space because I felt like it just would have provided more context and it wouldn't have been as shocking when she's talking about her daughter having her own apartment. Um, but I felt like the one conversation that they had because her daughter doesn't seem that way. And I kind of felt like I understood where she was coming from because I do feel as though when you make things like secretive or tell kids like you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that, they want to do it. And the fact that her mom is so open and cool with it, it seems like her daughter is just like, nah, because this don't seem right. You sit up here telling me I can have sex and stuff like somebody write about this. But I wish we would have been able to have her shed a little bit more insight on the relationship between her and her daughter and parenting and also to the relationship between her and Naked because that argument that they had, that felt like it was something a little bit more personal. I don't know if Naked like expressed his love for her at one point and she said no, but that I just felt like we were missing a lot from that conversation because it, it wasn't it wasn't adding as to why he got so heated. But I also think the relationship with Naked and his girl, um, I want them to break up. I want them to break up. They need to break up because you sit up here talking about you don't, you feel like you would, could be more romantic if she's never around. What? That don't make no sense. And I just don't know her motives either because she, I don't, I don't know. So I'm not right about that whole thing. And the fact that it just did their whole relationship just don't sit right in my spirit. Um, but like, I don't want to be with someone who tells me that I need to go home. Now she like, girl, I thought they lived together because she's always there. Now y'all don't live together. Yeah, honey, you there a little bit too much. But at the end of the day, if y'all in love and you're trying to get married, I don't know if he trying to get married, but I think she trying to get married. I was just like, I can't be with someone who's telling me that I need to leave for three days or four days in order for him to be able to tolerate me. That just didn't make sense at all. It didn't. It didn't make sense. Okay. So Diamond, I wish we got, I don't know. I felt like we didn't get to spend that much time with Diamond. He kind of disappeared until the last episode. And I was just like, okay. All right. And the whole thing with him and his baby mama, like, I do think that he's in love with his baby mama. And I really hope that all of this was staged because if it wasn't, like, his baby mama is trash for even trying to talk to one of his boys like that. Because I can see if she was, like, I mean, it'll make her right, but if she was trying to make him jealous. But he wasn't even there when you were, like, doing all of this. So I was just kind of like, why are you trying to get with one of his homeboys if... It just didn't make sense. And girl, if you with somebody, why we ain't never seen this man on the screen? Where he at? Is he real? Because I don't think he real. I don't think that this this secret lover isn't real. It just didn't make sense to me. I hated the whole storyline between her and Adela. It just, it didn't make, it just didn't make any logical sense whatsoever. But I will say for the next season, I just want them to show more of their actual lifestyles and not necessarily and have more lavish events because if y'all rich and famous and young it only be y'all at these events like y'all can't get no fillers to come in and sit down and make it seem like other people are showing up y'all ain't got no friends or friends that pop up they got money too i just want there to be some more because i feel like y'all got something here and just with a little work with a good hairstylist um a good lash expert as well um, I just think that, that there can be gold. But also, go ahead and give us that spinoff with Swanky and how Swanky styles people because I'm totally here for that. But overall, those are those are my spoilery thoughts about Young, African, and Famous. So thank you for, you know, hanging in there with me. But those are my not-so-quick thoughts of the Netflix series Young, Famous, and African. As always, my name is Sharana from Payroll Weights. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I love you guys 3000. And until I see you again, bye.